So in today's video, I want to teach you about what I think is one of the most important and amazing tools we picked up in wildlife biology for the study of wildlife. In about three year period, I was helping run about 190 of these cameras at once and put these things in the huge diversity of habitats from stream sides to cameras on trails to cameras on posts to all sorts of things like that. And as a consequence, I've really picked up some of these tips and tricks that I think could be really, really useful for you to not only figure out how to set up your camera trap, but to really get the most value out of it, to know where the wildlife is and to be able to position it in such a way that it's not going to fall off, it's not going to get misplaced, and you can get the best footage out of it that you can. So with that, let's get started. So in my mind, one of the most important steps in the process of setting up a camera trap is before you do anything with the camera itself, before putting it on a tree or what other surface you're attaching it to, you really want to ask yourself, what wildlife am I interested in filming? Because where you set up a camera trap, how you set it up, the angles that you use, the height on the tree that you attach it to, all those kinds of things are going to be highly dependent on the species you're interested in, in filming. If I wanted to film, for example, a robin swimming in the stream side, it would be a completely different setup that I'm interested in filming deer on a game trail. So for an animal walking up the hillside like this, I'll often put the camera at about waist height. And this is a pretty good area for capturing deer at an angle that is cinematic enough to be visually interesting, while not necessarily being at ground level and looking upward, where it's just so much of a distorted perspective that it can start to kind of distract and not really give you the kind of depth of detail that you would often be looking for when you're setting up one of these cameras. So before you attach the camera to the tree, you really want to ask yourself, what's the basic position of the animals that are walking down these game trails? and what angle do you want the camera to be attached to? So as an example, if the terrain is completely flat, you can put the camera directly against the tree and look straight outward. And doing so, you'll be able to see a good view of the wildlife at roughly chest level. It'll be a really, really nice kind of cinematic angle. On the other hand, if the wildlife are going from downhill to uphill, then having this flat angle means that you'll mostly be staring at the faces of wildlife and not all that much in the way of what you're actually looking for, which is the whole body of the wildlife. And so if you're looking downhill, what you want to do is angle the camera downward like this so that when the strap is all the way across the tree, the camera will be looking downhill and give you a much better perspective on the animal that you're actually looking for. If, on the other hand, you're at a base of a hillside where the wildlife are going downhill and your camera is down here, you'll kind of want to do the opposite. You'll want to kind of angle the camera upward like this so the camera is looking uphill and you still have that kind of chest level perspective of the wildlife that you're really looking for. So it looks a lot more like a whole animal and not just this kind of, kind of partial disembodied limb. <laughs> so once you decided where you want to put the camera, once you decided what your goals are for the wildlife that you're going to be filming, the very first thing I tend to do for normal setups is to take the strap of the camera and just kind of gently and broadly wrap it around the tree. You're not gonna have it attached too tightly for reasons that you'll see in a moment, but you're at least giving kind of a general location of where the camera will go. So once you have the camera initially on the tree, you'll start to hone in on the precise angle that you set it up at and tighten the camera to eventually have the actual setup that you're going for angle-wise. So the first thing I usually do is ask myself if I want the camera angled upward, towards the middle or downward. In this particular case, the camera is looking downhill, which means I want to angle it slightly downward. If you pull the strap tightly all the way before you actually attach it to the tree, then you won't be able to really adjust that fine scale level detail for how you want the camera to be positioned. And so to do that, what you'll want to do are use sticks. So because I want the camera to be looking downhill, if you just pull the strap tight immediately, what will inevitably happen is that the camera will flatten like this. And once it's flattened, you can't push it downward. So you really want the strap to be a little bit loose. And so what I'll do is I'll take these sticks and then put tuck them behind the camera like this. 
So once I have them in a approximately decent location where it looks like the camera is gonna be looking down the hill, I'll then start to tighten the camera. I'll start to tighten the strap so that the camera will pull back and it will pull back against these sticks so that its natural resting position is at this angle that you're looking for. That can often involve some finickiness. So for instance, if you need to pull the strap behind this large tree, I'm holding the camera into place with my waist so that the sticks are still behind there and the camera doesn't fall down again. So once it's behind the tree, I'll start to tighten the strap like this so that the sticks are behind the camera so that as the camera tightens, its resting position is angled downward and is using these sticks as the base against which the strap is being pulled. So now this is at a pretty tight spot. So if you start to move it like this, you can move it up and down and obviously it'll swivel and there'll be more on that later about how you can make this camera really, really solid against the strap. But if you kind of pull at it to the side like this, we try to rotate it, it's not gonna be too bad. This is a pretty good starting point. We don't have it fully set up yet, but you have a pretty good idea of where it's pointed. And that kind of brings me to the next step here. So the next thing I want to do when I'm checking out these cameras is to take the perspective of the animal I'm trying to film and go to about its height to see if the camera is pointing at the right spot, to see if the camera is pointing at approximately the right height. So in this particular case, I'm going down this game trail. The camera is really kind of pointed over here, which, well, fine, is not quite in line. If you have animals downhill, you're going to get some solid footage. But if you have animals closer to here, the camera really isn't going to be pointing at them in a way that really gets this kind of good cinematic capture. So what I'll do is I want to adjust it in this direction so that it's more pointed directly towards the trail. So sometimes you may not be totally sure whether the actual sensor itself is sensitive to you being in a certain direction or area. And so one of the really cool things that you can do with camera traps to remedy that is there's a thing that is basically a motion test. So I'm not going to run you into details this particular model, but the basic idea is that you can set the camera trap on to engage in in what's called a uh, motion test. And so the general idea here is that you put the camera to where it wants. I'll kind of get out of the way for a second. So the light should be not blinking. And then if you move in front of it like this, you can see this blinking light here. So what I'll do if I'm not totally sure about the angle of the camera is I'll walk up the trail at whatever height it is that I'm looking at. It's a fox, I'm gonna be down here like this on all fours. And I'll look at the motion sensor light of the camera and see whether or not it's blinking. If it's blinking, that means it's detecting the animal, which means that if it was actually armed, it would be filming me and we can actually get some of that footage. Okay, so you have your camera, you have it pointed basically where you want it. You're satisfied the motion sensor is going off, so you know if an animal is going up trail, that's gonna be captured what do you do next? Now, in a lot of newer models, they have these little screens on the camera trap where you can actually look at the video through the camera to see whether or not the angles you want are right. I'm still kind of old fashioned and I just sort of hate working with those because they're often really small. They're kind of awkward looking. They just don't look so great. But what I will do is I'll bring my laptop out in the field so that I can run the camera trap, get in the position of the animals that I want to be filming, act as if I'm that animal walking up the trail in a certain way, and then let the camera film. I'll then let the video stop recording. I'll then turn the camera off and then pull out the SD card and then put the SD card into my laptop and then check out the video on the laptop screen and see whether or not the full size video is actually the way I want it to look or if I need to adjust the camera in subtle ways. And this actually works so well. Obviously there's the risk of your laptop getting damaged in the field. I just recommend getting some kind of case for it and just being super, super careful with it. But the results you get by actually checking the footage before you put it fully locked down is immensely helpful. Okay, so now you've checked the camera's footage. You know that it's gonna give you exactly what you're looking for. What are the steps to actually finalize the process of setting the camera up? One of the first things I'll do, so make sure the camera is still pretty tight, still basically where I want it to be. You don't want to have the strap just hanging down like this because what will happen is that the wind will blow 
it, it'll start to go around like this, and then it will run in front of the motion sensor and back down, and then it will run in front of the motion sensor and back down, and then it will repeat this until either your battery is drained or you run out of space on the memory card. So you really want to secure the strap here. And to do that, what I'll usually do is see which direction it's coming from. In this case, it's going this direction. I'll wrap it around the tree. I'll typically wrap it underneath the camera and then take the tail end of the strap. I'll figure out where it's roughly the most solid in this direction. I'll grab the strap here and I'll see if there's like a little indentation in the bark or something like that where I can take the strap and pull it through like this. And so that way, the strap is actually secured by the main strap around the tree. So now that you have your camera pointed where you want, you're totally ready to go. The last thing you need to do is just secure it. How do you actually make sure that the camera is going to stay on the tree for as long as possible without animals really messing with it, without wind pulling it out of position, without all these things that can happen to camera traps while they're out in nature? And my favorite trick is to use this. So this is Gorilla Tape, and you can find it in basically any hardware store you work on. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by Gorilla Tape because I only have like 120 subscribers right now. What do you think? Please subscribe. But this is just an unbelievably strong tape that if properly applied, can keep the camera on the tree for a very long time in a way that doesn't actually strip the bark from the tree or damage the outside. So let me go show you guys how I do that. So the basic idea here is that you're basically going to create a nest around the camera out of Gorilla Tape so that no matter what direction the camera is pushed or pulled or you know messed with, it's gonna basically stay in place. So what I'll do is I'll take this section of tape and the very first thing I'll do is attach it to the corner of one side of the camera. In this case, the right side of the camera. And I'll pull out enough tape that it will stretch to the rear side of the tree, in this particular case, about this much. And what I'll do is I'll take the tape around this corner on the camera and then apply it so that there's some pressure on the top of the camera and the bottom of the camera and wrap the tape around the outside of the camera so that the tape is attached to the strap. Now that's actually a really important point here. You really want it so that the tape is being initially supported by the strap because what you'll end up doing is building successive layers of tape so that one piece is attached to the next in a way that is really, really strong and being held rather than just using a single piece of tape. So then I'll repeat this process on the other side of the camera, taking the tape, wrapping it around the corner, and then attaching the tape to the camera strap and pulling it back to the rear side of the tree. So the final thing I'll do now that I have the base layer around the camera is to start to take individual straps from the side and wrap them around to the section of the tape that you have on the back of the camera. So for example, you'll put some tape here, solidify it, make sure that it's attached to tape all the way around like that. And just keep repeating this process around the camera. Each time attaching the layer so it's right on top of the layer that you just put down. And that same idea is the case over here. And so probably what I would do is I put one more, making sure I attach a little bit to this strap over there. And so then, in cases like this, where you just have a single piece of tape around the strap, I'll put some tape in between them so that this piece is more solidified. Because what you really don't want is you really don't want the tape to come off and start to flap in front of the camera. That's a really, really uh, bad situation. So the name of the game is always tape on top of other pieces of tape as much as you possibly can. And once you have those pieces attached, I'll then put a final strip like this so that this is laid on top. It then wraps around and all of these attachment points from the camera have a piece of tape around them so that they stay solid and then I'll do that for the other side of the camera as well. So 
So then to finish it off, see where you have all these kind of individual strips that potentially if caught by the wind or some animal could get removed. I'll look at where those pieces are and then just take one last strap like this that moves underneath and goes over them so that it kind of seals down those entrance points. If you have spots like this that are hanging off, I'll try to kind of move that underneath there. I'll then maybe even take one last piece of small tape like this, attach it to that little piece that was sticking out so that that also seals that end. And now these individual ends don't have pieces that can potentially fly off. Okay, so with that, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you've learned things that will help you set up your camera traps better, help make it more stable, help you get the kind of wildlife footage you want, nice and secure to the tree. And I hope you're able to use this video to film some wildlife in some amazing ways, get some amazing photos and videos and shots of the animals. So if you enjoyed the video and this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. I would love your company. I post all sorts of videos on both wildlife biology and nature in general, trying to inspire that interest in nature, while also teaching other wildlife biologists and nature enthusiasts things I've learned as a wildlife biologist. And I'll try to get some of the footage I pick up from this camera in future videos so that you guys can see the results and the outcomes of the camera that I set up for this video. So that will be all for now. I'm going to be doing a future video on some of the more advanced setups, things like having a log that's stretched across a creek bed and putting the camera on the log so that it's looking downstream. I had a blast filming this. Hope you guys enjoyed. So till next time in your own lives, wonder in wonder. I hope you're able to go out into nature and just get some amazing footage and see some amazing things. It's pretty cold out. My hands are exposed. And so I think I'm going to end the video right there. Till next time.